this is really weird because we're using a different <laughs> platform than we're used to. Um, but hi, friends. So welcome to our live show for our August book of the month, which I don't have, but Zoe does, which is, wait, sorcery of thorns. Take it with your hands. Oh, perfect. Uh, thank you. Can oh, you know that 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 I had that was pretty good, though. <laughs> Good. Next time we'll do that special effect. <laughs> yeah, that was super good. Um, so yeah, that was our August book of the month, and we're going to be discussing it today. So if you guys are wondering, where is Hannah? Um, Hannah is taking a break from Bookmarked presently. She is focusing on treatment. We put a whole post on Twitter about it. So if you guys wanted to know more about where she is and all that stuff, then you guys can check that out. But um. That's why we haven't been doing our weekly Friday live shows. Right now, we're just going to be focusing on the book club. But eventually, we don't know when. But soon, hopefully, we will be getting back to our weekly live shows. But right now, we are letting Hannah take the time that she needs to focus on treatment. So if you're wondering where she is, that is where we all miss her. Yes. So, um, yeah. So was that all that I had to say at the beginning? Yeah, we're just doing, we're doing, uh, we're still doing the monthly book club because we want to keep bookmarked alive and we want to be here for when Hannah is ready to come back. Yeah. So actually in September, we're going to be reading one of her favorite books and that is going to be Circe by Madeline Miller. Madeline Miller? Madeline. Madeline, I think. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> but Hannah chose the book of the month, so we're going to be reading it and she may or may not join us. We're not going to make any plans on that front. But yeah, just taking it week by week. Thank you for yes. your patience. Yes, thank you. We want to make sure she's focusing on her health because that's the most mm -hmm. important thing. So thanks for understanding. Um, but we are reading while well, we read Sorcerer of Thorns. So what's it about? We're going to start with spoiler three, three thoughts, yes. by the way. Okay, I have it on my phone. Um, all sorcerers are evil. Elizabeth was raised in a library surrounded by magical grimoires. When the library's most dangerous grimoire is released, her desperate intervention implicates her in the crime. Elizabeth must turn to her sworn enemy, the sorcerer Nathaniel Thorne, and his demonic servant to clear her name. She begins to question everything she's been taught about sorcerers, the library she loves, and even herself. Also, there's probably some romance. Just guessing. Yes, there was romance. <laughs> there was. But I actually, so I read her first book, um, Margaret mm. Rogerson's first book, which was An Enchantment of Ravens. And that's like an entirely a romance-focused fantasy. Mm. So really this one was like pretty light on the romance. I was expecting much mm -hmm. more. But like the romance that I did get, I wasn't mad about. <laughs> I did <laughs> really enjoy it. Really, really liked it. Uh, um, I... I mean, we could talk about that later. I yeah. have different thoughts. <laughs> well, what did you what did you rate the book? I think I'd give it probably like a four out of five stars, no higher than that. But like, I don't feel right giving it like a three point five. Yeah. So it's like a the minimum four. If yeah. that makes sense. I gave it a four out of five stars as well, but I'm kind of if be on a four four point five. Um, Ooh. Yeah, I like. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was super cool. Loved the world. Loved the characters. But the plot was a bit weak, in my personal mm -hmm. opinion. But it kind like I loved the characters so much that that did kind of make up for what the plot was lacking, in my opinion. Ooh, also, the world was like so cool. Like yeah. this is very much a fantasy for book lovers and with book lovers in mind like even the dedication I forget I know, I what it is but that. like yeah <laughs> for like, all the girls who found themselves in books that's yeah the it's very much for people who love books and mm -hmm. like I love the fact that it's a fantasy that is born out of a love of books and a love of reading and like the magical library like everything about it was just so cool so it was a really easy world for me to get lost in I just wish that the plot had been a bit stronger to carry the story yeah. along. I was expecting there to be some plot twists or something, but yeah. there were none. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, oh, what if this person, you know, stabs him in the back or like, oh, I mean, there was kind of, I guess, something that could be described as a plot twist near the Most end. Most of it, though, like, was very, like, straightforward, yeah. straight line to the end. And like, there wasn't really yeah. the buildup. There wasn't really 
the like suspense I guess Mm -hmm. but like I just loved the characters so much. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing any spoilers right now. Um, no, we are just not. letting you know. Uh, but I think this is, if you like fantasy and if you like books, which I'm guessing because you like fantasy <laughs> books, but if, um, I think you'll really enjoy this. It's not like a standout book, in my opinion, because like not a lot it's of- It's not groundbreaking. It's not unique. It's not like really unique no. in the plot. It's more unique in the fact that like there are magical books. <laughs> It's like what yeah. if the Beauty and the Beast, like the Beast Library, like was magical. That's what it kind yeah. of felt like in a way. Um, but like I if you're not a fan of fantasy, I don't think that you would like I mean, I would still recommend it. I don't think that there's anything like controversial about it. It's just like it's a it's a book. It's a fantasy book. It's a YA mm-hmm. fantasy book, and that's what it is. And it was an enjoyable time, but um it's is it a standalone it is so that's, that's what, what i, I like like margaret robinson con- does very good fantasy standalones so you have like one story and i like the fact that there's standalones because that's so hard to find in fantasy so that's mm-hmm. something that she's doing that's really unique but mm-hmm. like apart from that i will say like they're not the two books that i mean she has two books right now but she doesn't have the most original books but like i'm not saying that as like anything rude or like I don't know a negative because she does like what she does really well and I enjoyed Mm -hmm. both of the books by her that I read but what I've noticed her books are both very polarizing like in Enchantment of Ravens people either loved it or hated it in this one people either loved it or hated it yeah I find that very often there's not really like too many people that fall in the middle obviously there are some people I feel like I'm kind of in the middle with yeah Yeah. there are definitely (laughs) the people who fall in the middle but I think for the most part like Mm -hmm. they tend to be pretty polarizing reads um Mm -hmm. but like I think if you're reading it and you're going into it like hoping for the best fantasy book that you've ever read something that's going to change your life like you're not going to get that but I kind of or maybe you this, are depending maybe, on like the yes, trope you like because it has a lot of tropes. This it has does. a lot of tropes, so that's why I think that this is like the perfect fantasy book for if you really like the Mortal Instruments series. I was thinking the especially, same thing, yeah, especially has, like, the Infernal the Devices, style. Mm-hmm. the writing style, mm-hmm. is where you've got like a book lover, like they just two peas in pod. If you're looking for something to read after the Infernal Devices, this is like a great book. Yes. Because Except I, I like those really characters more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's those. fair. That's fair. I just like I love Nathaniel. <laughs> <laughs> I loved him so much. Silas, I thought he was great. Mm, uh, Silas and her friend. What was it? Catrian. Yeah. Cat- yeah. Catrian. Yes, I, I like Katrian. them. And then um, Nathaniel and Elizabeth. I found Blair. I, as first. <laughs> oh, I love Nathaniel. <laughs> I thought he was great. He was like, greedy, sarcastic. Like she is him. the most generic YA fantasy. That's why I love it. Like he has he light. Uh, he has black hair and light eyes. Like that. That is every generic. YA. He for sure is. Like he is nothing mm-hmm. that I haven't seen before. But like also nothing that I'm gonna get tired of anytime soon. <laughs> like I'm not mad about it (laughs) but he reminded me very much of Will from Infernal Devices Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) we just read no I know uh, the Infernal Devices so that's why like I feel like I was comparing it a lot and I'm like he's not Will He's I not mean, he's like not? he doesn't have the like, charisma of Will. Like yes. sometimes he would. This is not spoilers, but sometimes he would like be sassy, and then he'd just be like there. Like he didn't keep up the sassiness. He was just like a a dude who was sassy sometimes, <laughs> which like Amazing. realistic, I guess. I just I, like, I'm not mad at him, but like yeah. I'm not like he, did, he just didn't do a lot art. for you. Like mm-hmm. I really enjoyed him. I like because, silence. Like, I think a big part of it is like I filled in the blanks of what I wanted him to be, which is what I do with characters. When there's like the seed of potential of something that I could love, like I will be like, yes, I'm going to build you into this in my brain. Yeah. And he has like a lot of snark to him. And like 
I love me some snark. Okay. <laughs> well, it's maybe like we didn't that read Elizabeth the same was book. like really smart. <laughs> like they kept saying that Elizabeth was smart. Okay, this is spoilers. This might be spoilers. I feel not really, but like she was so naive. Like she's like, I've read so many books in the library. I'm like she had it. I guess she had book smarts, but no street smarts. But like, yeah. That's fair. She was so naive. And she's like, oh, I wonder what this means. And then we know. We, that's the thing with the plot twist. Like, she... Did she see anything coming? No. No. She's me. <laughs> so relatable. I see no plot twist coming ever. So I'm always surprised by everything. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow. But I guess yeah. she was sheltered. Like, that makes she sense was. in a way. But also the fact that, like... They said that she'd read so much and the fact that she like didn't know I mean it makes sense but I didn't like it yeah that's fair I think that's a fair critique yeah I don't think like I what I really liked about her was the fact that she brought into the story um anxiety representation and I thought that was really well done Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that like seeing that in a fantasy setting I enjoy like obviously yeah. didn't enjoy it, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, you, you appreciated it. Yeah. Yes, thank you. That's mm-hmm. the word that I'm looking for. <laughs> Struggles. Um, um oh, and there was ace rep and there was bi rep. Yes. And that's all I can remember off the top of my head. Yeah. Please let me know if there's anything that I'm missing, but I know that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so oh, there was yeah. like what? Oh, sorry. I'm not reading the comments. They said they did mention that most of the books she read were like 400 years old. That makes sense. That's fair. Yeah. I like, I enjoyed her as a protagonist. Mm-hmm. I thought she was interesting to read about. Definitely, once again, she wasn't anything that I was like, this is like a very unique character. And I feel like I've never read <laughs> one like her before. But like, I did enjoy her perspective on things and getting to know her yeah. a bit more. I'm trying but, to think of other things that we can say that are not spoilers because yeah, I do I want to talk about like things that could be considered more spoilery. Do so, you want to get into spoilers? Um, yeah, sure. So, like, okay, would we recommend this? Yeah. Or who would we recommend it to? I think we would. Re- I well, speaking for me, not we. Yeah. <laughs> We as a collective. Um, I would recommend it for someone who is maybe just starting out with fantasy and is making the jump from, like, middle grade into YA Mm -hmm. fantasy. I think it would be a good one for that. Um, Or someone who's just, in general, starting out with fantasy or is just kind of tired of fantasy and is looking for something to maybe get them back into it, you know, and they're, like, a major book lover. I think that that's who I'd recommend it. Mm-hmm. this got me out of a, a reading slump because it was like really like it's kind of like candy I guess in a way that there's, you're not going to get a lot from it but it's enjoyable at least personally okay. like, I enjoyed myself I'm like ooh what if I lived in this library like oh this is fun that you can like talk yeah. to books and things like that so it like really gets your imagination like sparking um, but yeah I would recommend this if you are maybe like a new to YA or new to reading in general because the main character she's not too complicated she's kind of like younger it seems like yeah mentally um so I think that you could relate to this more than me who is judging her a lot (laughs) (laughs) what's new (laughs) um okay spoilers I think we're gonna jump into spoilers now so we'll just you guys to leave. Who's your favorite character? Mm, I think my favorite. <laughs> I really, really love a broody boy. Oh my gosh. I, love I liked his cousin, backstory. Like, oh, yeah. Have I don't you, know. Uh, have you watched any like um Full Metal Alchemist? Anything like that? Well, it has to do with like necromancy as well. And like okay. bringing back dead relatives. And it really reminded me of that. And it's like, I like really enjoy that trope, I guess. Or just yeah. like, device, like trying to bring back people, but it doesn't work. Or if it like, if it works and it doesn't work correctly. I love necromancy. <laughs> I it's think it's really fascinating. Like, I agree. It's, it's because it's so dark. Like, yeah, I don't know. 
I love you know it. They should. You know it will never go well. But you exactly. Want it to be. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally get it. Uh, I wish we got more of necromancy because, like, his whole family was known for being necromancers and yeah i guess there are there is an upcoming is it gideon the ninth is that necromancy yeah i book? think so yeah yeah so we'll get some that. necromancy yeah there you go we'll get your <laughs> fix <laughs> um uh, i did also really like silas though mm-hmm. i thought he was a I great like character this- like and the dynamic between the two of them i loved and then the dynamic between the three of them like the character dynamics they're great. Mm-hmm. They were just solid. <laughs> I liked um his like dual personality in a way. Mm-hmm. I liked I felt like he was the most complicated character. Definitely. definitely. Yeah. And well, he was my favorite, I guess. And then I like yeah. Captain because she was just like she was different. Like the um Elizabeth and Nathaniel were definitely like they fulfilled their roles in mm-hmm. YA fantasy games. Like I wasn't upset at their characters at all. It's just like I, we've seen it before, and I I don't know why, but I was like, oh, I want I want difference. Um, no, like, I get I, it. Like, so, when like read so many books, it makes sense. Yeah. But like the pranks and stuff like that, and just like casually in like one of the last chapters, are like, oh, she also like figured this whole thing about um, the director, like just casually yep. saved two <laughs> like crises, like okay, I'll go Love along you. with that. <laughs> underappreciated character. <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I wish that her... was gone into more. Yeah. Because they just I brought agree. it up. I think she may have been a really cool protagonist to have, honestly. honestly I don't know. That's what I, mm-hmm. Well, because they um in the beginning, you get to see, like, Elizabeth. Like, you, you see her as kind of a troublemaker, I guess. Yeah. But then, like... The entire rest of the novel, she's just saving the day, like, time and time again. Like, I really wouldn't see her as, like, breaking the rules that much, I guess. Because she's like, I must save this person and this person and this person for the greater good. But then, like, and then she, like, really wanted to be in, like, I don't know. She really wanted to prove herself, but yet, like, was breaking the rules a lot. So, like, I, I felt like... I didn't fully understand her character in a way. Yeah. Because she felt almost like Mary Sue-ish. I don't want to use that. But like, I felt like it was well, she was pretty really cookie cutter. Odd. Yes. She didn't like, I don't know, like when we are introduced to her, we're told that she's like a rule breaker and like, mm-hmm. like pranks. And stuff. Like I was expecting her to be more like Katrian than what yeah. she turned out to be. Yeah. That's fair. That makes sense. I get that. Um, What did you think about the villain? (laughs) I mean, I also, another trope that I really enjoy is like mind control. So like I enjoyed that that aspect came back because Mm -hmm. I was like, when we learned about the book of eyes, I thought that was so interesting and like so creepy. Like I literally like, when I, when you read that they all like opened their eyes, like the book opened its eyes. I was like, holy cannoli, what is happening? Um, But that was like the most shocked I think I was in like the entire book. Cause I was like, this is going to be a dark book. Like, oh my gosh. And I thought that the book of eyes was going to turn out to be like the villain of some sort i don't know i was expecting Which it to be much so more cool. sinister. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um like i was thinking the book was going to possess people and like you would learn the whole time that the, the villain wasn't actually a bad person was just like controlled by the book like i was yeah. expecting plot twists in that regard um awesome. but i do like that we got that like came around in the end and that yeah. he was just safely in his house the whole time just doing all these things just like chilling. Um, someone said that they gave him that Ashcroft gave them Lockhart vibes. What is what are your Do thoughts not. on that? Lockhart fan number one. <laughs> Don't do that to Gilderoy Lockhart. He would never. Uh, oh my god. Just, he was so cookie cutter. Yeah, like, so I think that is where the difference between this book being five stars and four stars comes in. It's because there were quite a few main elements of the story that I found to be pretty cookie cutter. And I think a lot of like my issues with the plot 
come from the fact that the villain himself was so like just not really that interesting and I think that's why the plot mm-hmm. ended up suffering is because it didn't have a strong enough base in the villain to go off of I just read a comment by SJ Hawk his big I'm doing this for your own good speech at the end <laughs> did not slap and I agree with that like I did not understand his motivations yeah because he's like we're doing this for progress but like I don't understand how like a big bad demon can help with like electricity. <laughs> That's what it's saying. Yeah. Like, how would that like? And then he's like fulfilling his family's legacy, or whatever. But like the legacy started like three hundred years ago. So like, is that moving forward? I don't think so. I think that's moving backwards and fulfilling what they started long ago. So <laughs> I think progress with being like, oh, I'm just not gonna do this dumb thing, and I'm going to like move on with my life. Uh, I feel like. To be fair, a lot of our, like, I'm just thinking back on the Clockwork Angel live show, and we complained about the villain in that one. <laughs> but, like, there were other things going on in that, and, like, there Definitely. wasn't actually that much romance in this book. No, and that's, like, one of the main, I've avoided reviews, but, like, you still kind of see them floating around, you know? And one of the main critiques that I've seen from people, and even people commenting, like, when we posted about the book, have said that they were bored with the book. So I think, like, I totally get where this book would be boring. If you don't care for the characters, and you don't really, like, think that there's that much of a plot, like, I can see why you would be really bored throughout this book. You don't fill in the blank. <laughs> like you- Yes. I filled in the blanks, so I ended up loving the characters, and I loved their banter, I loved all that stuff, and the world just completely captivated me, so I think that's where I didn't find the book boring. Like, I just think that this book has gotten fascinating reviews from, like, the few that I've seen. It's been really interesting. I haven't read any reviews. I've seen a few because, like, I know that some of our friends have really loved it. Like, Elias really loved it. Whitney loved it. But I've also seen, like, Monica didn't like it. And, like, you know, I it's just, it's so polarizing. And I love when a book is polarizing because I find it so fascinating <laughs> to go into people's reasonings for it. But mm-hmm. the definitely main critique I've seen is that it was boring and I get that because I do think that like at times it was slow and it did drag but that's when I was like I will just make up things in this world (laughs) and I will make a good book for myself I don't know if that's how you're supposed to read books (laughs) how How much you can fill in the blank yeah it's like how how Hannah said that she reads um fan fiction yes yes. she's like I just ignore the parts I don't like and like fill in other gaps and that's what it seems like you're doing um I'm usually when there's a polarizing book I'm usually in the middle and that's how I feel in this regard as well I think honestly that I didn't want to give this like but I, I don't think a 3.5 is a bad rating I feel like people think of think threes so. and think like oh like what was wrong with the book that you gave it a three star but like on good three read, is isn't like, a three like it was average. good average yeah but like good average so for me a yeah. three is when like I thought a book was solid it was enjoyable but like it didn't really like mm. do anything for me and it's probably a book that I'm going to forget that's the difference to me, between, and I mean, I forget all books, but like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the difference between a four and a three for me. Mm-hmm. So a 3.5 to me is one that, like, I might, I'll remember elements of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm so torn on my rating for this book because I feel like a lot of why I want to give it a higher rating is because of what I feel like. <laughs> so I think a yeah. four is, like, solid because I mm-hmm. did love elements of it even though there were some things that I didn't enjoy about it as well yeah I never actually start these live shows with like a solid rating in mind so I always give it like a high rating like I'm optimistic and then we so when we discuss it I'm like you know actually I know because you're like wow you like lowered your rating after talking but like I'm processing what I'm thinking exactly and like we read it so close to doing the live shows that like it's still fresh in your mind an hour ago (laughs) so it's still fresh in your mind and everything yeah. and then like the more you discuss it with other people that's why I really like to read other people's reviews when I finish yeah. a book 
I like notice things that I may not have necessarily noticed myself when reading it. So I really like to do that. Yeah, there we're just like we're going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outside. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like when we yeah. discuss it, even when we don't do lashes for things and we both read a book and we discuss it, like I'll change my rating sometimes afterwards too. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, I like talking with you it. and Hannah and like the people yeah. in the chat too, like, oh my gosh, I love I love all of you. Um and oh, someone just said, Georgia just said, I kept thinking that the grimoires were like that monster book from Harry Potter. Oh my God, yes. yes. This book, like, definitely is like, I think if you liked Harry Potter, you'll probably like this book. I mean, yeah. obviously, so many people out there like Harry Potter, so that's a pretty, like, grand statement. If you're but... a person, you might like this book. There's a 50 50 chance. <laughs> But, like, I think that it did give some, like, major, like, Harry Potter world vibes to me. Mm -hmm. which I liked, like the yeah. library and everything. And like, I don't know, just the magic system. Obviously, like, I'm not saying that this book is like Harry Potter. I would never say that about a book because that is setting <laughs> the expectations way too high. But I can see why, like, if you were a fan of Harry Potter, you would probably like this book as well, depending on the elements of it that you like. Yeah. But, you, know. you know, that's something we haven't talked about. It's the magic system. What did you think about yes. the magic system? I thought the well, magic first system. First explain the magic system. And oh my God. So I found the magic system to be really confusing. Really? Yeah. It took, like, I kept on having to go back into the audiobook to, like, so that's one of my issues with it was I don't think the world building was that strong, but I loved the world so much that it didn't really bug me that I felt like the world building wasn't that strong. But I think part of that might stem from the fact that I listened to the audiobook. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like, I started the audiobook, and then I was like, nah, um, because I didn't really, like, I don't know, it didn't really mesh with what I was mm -hmm. reading. Um, but, I, you know, I think a reason why you filled in the blank was because the writing style of this was a lot of, like, fill in the blank. For sure. Like, she would start, like, a story or whatever, and then she would jump to, like, either forward and then fill in, like, what happened in that time. Like, it, it would go like that, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what, why you were able to be, like, a little flexible with things. Yeah. But I liked the magic system. I liked that it was yeah. all dependent on demons and, like, you're not just born magical. I was expecting, I was expecting Elizabeth to, like, Someone said in the chat, they're like, ooh, um, that she should have summoned Lorelai as her demon. And I'm like, that would have been so cool. Yeah. Like, it didn't happen. But, like, she summoned Silas. First of all, like, what? I'm sorry, but, like, <laughs> I didn't feel like they were close enough. Like, her and Nathaniel were, like, in love at that point. And that she'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll give up 10 years of my life for this, like, dude. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Um... Uh, oh, <laughs> Julia says Elizabeth's only discernible trait was being tall. Shake my head. <laughs> I mean, it's so true. It's really true. I don't know. Like, I don't know. <laughs> She's tall and strong. She's a big lady. <laughs> I liked the fact that it was like an interactive read, though. Because I felt like it, like, because I feel like it, like, her right, like, what you said about the writing style. Like, I feel like it invited the reader into the story. You know like what I mean? You're on adventure Obviously not scenario. because of your face. <laughs> you do not know what I'm I mean. I'm so confused. <laughs> what I mean is, like, because, I don't know. <laughs> no, like, you can, that's that's your opinion. Like, go, go full <laughs> force. I just don't understand what you're meaning. Face, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was beautiful. Uh, what a beautiful moment. No one knows what I'm talking about, but I know it makes sense in my head. I think that, that's great. A lot of the time when I talk, you don't understand what I'm talking about. That's so. true. That's the beauty of our friendship. Uh, Amazing. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, the writing style was interesting. People are saying, like, oh, the, the clock chan says, I liked how regular colors didn't exist. It was all jewel tones. It's not green. It's emerald. It's not red. It's ruby. And, like, I, she used a lot of similes, a yeah. lot of similes, and you know, she did let out a breath she didn't know she'd been holding. We got that. 
Um, <laughs> well said. And there was a lot of info dumping. Especially, I mean, definitely at the beginning. But like, it wasn't an it wasn't a bad experience. It was no. just like it was a YA fantasy book. Like, yes, I expected this to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm complaining quite a bit, so it seems like I didn't like. Yeah, it, but I like, actually really, really liked it. The thing is, when you watch these live shows, like we're trying to critique it and like give opinions. So like, I feel like it's so much easier to explain what you didn't like a- about a book yeah. than what you did like. I like the like, books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I loved the books. And I loved, like, I don't know, there was just something about it that, like, clicked with me. Even though I feel like there was, like, quite a bit of the book that, like, mm-hmm. m- was a lot of missed opportunity. It was. I still found yeah. it enjoyable. Like S.J. Hawk just said, the biggest thing that annoyed me was that it was so anticlimactic. I think For that's sure. how I felt, too, is that, like, I was expecting Elizabeth to like be something, not like a book class. <laughs> that didn't really make a lot of yeah. sense to me. Cause like, I mean, I guess it's like she was developing at that age or something like that. But, like, what if you're there for like, like what, what was his name? Um, I don't remember his name, but like the elderly man has been there for like decades probably. And he's, he ha- he's not affected. Is it only when you're like a baby? And I'm sure yeah. there's been a baby there before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's mm-hmm. never been a baby at the library before. Um, I just, like, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. And, like, I was expecting her to, like, have some connection to, like, maybe she was... I thought she was going to be related to Prendergast, honestly. Mm. And that, like, maybe she was, like was actually connected to like the spirit of the library or something like that not just like she is a book class <laughs> she is oh yeah that mm. i don't know that kind of took me out of it for a second <laughs> like <laughs> even elizabeth was like what yeah <laughs> you called me a book class yeah okay yeah. Oh. um did you see that someone <laughs> commented uh where is it Amber Elizabeth and half and half me mom's a giant <laughs> bit of a nasty shock. My mom's a giant, my dad's a book louse. <laughs> bit of a nasty shock when <laughs> She's the biggest oh book God. louse around. Oh Amazing. goodness gracious. Uh, Honestly. I'm like actually crying. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh, we're so funny. We're so funny. Um oh. <laughs> amazing huh. i yeah, like the okay. atmosphere of the book overall though yeah i wish we got more of the um the moss people the moss something like the moss spirits of the mm-hmm. forest like i felt like that was setting up for something too they're like there was a plague on this entire like nation but, like whatever that's cool yeah, yeah. um we're going to raise this demon <laughs> for progress um, um. Yeah, I don't know. I I wish this book had a better villain, and then I think it would have mm. been a five like star for romance. me. Yes, yes. I feel like that's like the reason why I really enjoy like Infernal Devices, not just because of like the nostalgia factor, but also like I root for that love triangle with for all sure. my heart, and like I really like that takes over the entire novel but like this yeah. I felt like it was like half of the amount of plot that I wanted and half of the amount of romance that I wanted it was either like give me more of one or the other or just like make it really weird and like turning her into an actual book louse like I don't know yeah like go all the way or just mm-hmm. don't <laughs> yeah I, can, I get that more romance, I think, would have definitely probably brought this book up to a five star for me. The weird thing is that, like, she didn't reach out to Nathaniel immediately. Like, mm-hmm. she spent a lot of time just, like, roaming around on her own when I would expect, like, the first person she would reach out to would be Nathaniel because, like, they fought, yeah. they fought those, like, creatures together and all of that. Like, she really felt like she understood him and, like, they were connected. And it took, like... Like, her going to a mental hospital and just, like, roaming the streets. Like, I was very... What was that? What was that? Was that just, like, 
that mm. <laughs> it was just like to me, another thing that like Ashcroft was a bad dude that he sent a lady to a a mental hospital where they were taking advantage of their patients. Like I guess that was adding to like his, his villainy. Worse, but like I didn't trust him from the moment he was charming. Like you can never trust charming people in fan in any any book. It's so yeah. true. It's so true. The Jane Austen taught me that. Me. Yes, honestly, what a good lesson. Life lessons from Jane Austen. <laughs> Oh, Beautiful. okay. We have three comments in a row from people talking about the romance for stardusted, um, star, star, stardusted isms. Um, the romance was just ra- the right amount for me. Lara says the romance was a little flat, and Sapphire SK says at least the romance wasn't rushed. So, like, I, I, it seems that everybody has a different opinion on it. I do like that it was like slow burn. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, but then, like, yeah. the one part that I really enjoyed was, like, the nightgown part. (laughs) That worked for me. (laughs) Uh, Amazing. uh, It just wasn't, like, it wasn't really, like, a standout part. Like, it wasn't, like, that was the standout part in my mind because I haven't, guess I guess I haven't seen that in another novel before, like, doing a dressing gown with one hand. Like, okay, that was unique. But, like, their dynamic wasn't super unique. Yeah. And I think, like, I could deal with their characters being, like, the way that they were. And, like, like I could deal with him being, like, not, like, super sarcastic, but just, like, whatever. If they had, like, if they had a different dynamic, if she was more, like, stern with him or more, like, I'm going to be the perfect person. Like, if, if it was just more. Like, I wanted some yeah. tension between them. But they were just, like, on the same page the entire time. Yeah. I want to draw. Ellie, yeah. Elias is in the chat just screaming about how much he loves this book. <laughs> oh, amazing. You know that you loved it. He also yeah. enjoyed it. But, like, I like that this is a like, d- d- divisive <laughs> book. Mm-hmm. I feel like, people saw different aspects from it. Exactly. Yeah. And, like, I think to me, I don't know. I think that, like, it was a good book like enjoyable fun Did, like I don't know I I said it before but I really love when a book divides people I find it so fascinating mm-hmm. so like I really loved everything about this book uh, or someone just really, said what what? <laughs> what what did someone say someone said um that they thought there would be a love triangle situation I definitely was expecting Me that too. too just because oh. the book is like so strong in the tropes that I thought, like for sure, it was gonna be the like check marks all the time. Silas, I was like, that's why he was my favorite character. Character because she was just like, oh dang, he was hot. Like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> and he was just like, I thought it was gonna like he was gonna be gem. She was gonna be like in a way like this like diluted gem, diluted Tessa, exactly. diluted will. Yeah. Uh. So like, I think that if they're like this is, and I hate love triangles. But I think that this would kind of be another case like the Infernal Devices where I would have enjoyed it if there mm-hmm. was a love triangle. Like him honest. sacrificing himself? Like what if, like honestly, what if it was like like a, a whole, like they were all in love with each other and then yeah. he sacrificed, like he sacrificed himself for him, but like there's also, it was because of romance. They didn't say that Nathaniel was bisexual. So like, I mean, I know that Silas doesn't care about, like he's, he doesn't care about humans, but like. What if he did? And yeah. they were all in love together. Yeah. That would have oh, been great. That would have been because great. Because she was like so upset about him being gone. I'm like, were you in love with Silas? Like, I don't blame you. Yeah. Understandable. <laughs> <sighs> yes. Do you have any last thoughts? About um, I don't think so. I think we kind of exhausted it. I just, yeah. like, I had a... I'm satisfied by the book. Yes. Like, I don't have, like, any real complaints. I was just like, yeah, that's kind of what I expected. Like, I wish there was more to it. But, like, I'm not upset that I read it. And I would recommend it to, like, people who are really into fantasy. Like, I'm not really into fantasy. I just, I read what people recommend that I read. And usually it's good. 
and this just i mean i think the last fantasy book that like really stood out to me was six of crows yeah i was gonna say six of crows one of the more recent ones i read so i'm like hmm, kind oh, of <laughs> yeah you definitely can't compare this to six of mm-hmm. crows like i think if you take it for what it is and you're looking for like a fun easy quick fantasy read then you'll be yeah. satisfied with it um i think it will kind of leave you wanting a little bit more but i don't think it left me wanting more in a way where it made me not like it like i do still think i really enjoyed it i think i give it a three I'm now that i'm like i'm solid mm-hmm. with it yeah. yeah you went down from a 4.5 to a four i went down from like a four ish to like a three but like yeah. it's not a bad three i still like i wouldn't tell anyone not to read it not like the past two books that we read yeah yeah um, this was but... like a major improvement on the past yes. books that we've read oh my god uh, definitely an improvement mm-hmm. um let us know what you thought about the book thanks for reading it if you read it this month like yes. thanks for joining us yeah um, so next month we are going to be reading Cersei by Madeline Miller. Yes, and it's not on my bookshelf. Great. I don't have it. I have to buy it. it. I was like, going to wait for the paperback. <laughs> but alas, I will go and buy it. But yeah, I'm excited for that. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the book. If you didn't, I'm sorry. It's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for joining us for this live show and we will see you guys next month bye bye